So far this season, we've had Optimus Prime come back as an evil zombie, we've seen the Chaos Monster from Planet Dread, and we almost saw Starscream's ghost bring back Unicron. It's been a pretty hardcore year, so we can forgive a stupid light-hearted episode like this one, right? We're angry internet nerds, of course we can't. So we open with Daniel, whom I should note we really haven't even seen do much of anything since the movie, wandering around Cybertron alone. That's some good parenting there, Spike and Carly. Oh, but of course, it's a surprise party, like in the title. Meanwhile, Galvatron is spying on them, uh, on the birthday party, for the little child. And then the Combaticons interrupt the party with an attack. Man, they're just evil. They even got the dead Autobot Hound working for them, for no apparent reason. And then, as they retreat, a tiny version of Bruticus, the guy they combined to form, runs away with them. <sighs> oh, so they attack to sabotage some kind of peace conference. Turns out Spike grew up to be an ambassador, which is actually kind of cool, I think. I wish our diplomats wore cool spaceman suits like this. I'd be a lot more interested in interstellar politics, that's for sure. As the Autobots mop up after the attack, Ultra Magnus apparently shows off how brave and noble he Forget is. Forget about me. The shuttle has priority. The peace conference depends on it. Now, to me, that sounds kind of passive-aggressive, but okay, fine. Whatever. Wheelie and Daniel are so impressed by this display of alleged selflessness that they decide to throw the big duller to surprise party of his own. They set off on a pointless quest to figure out when his birthday is. Oh, the excitement. First, they go to Perceptor, whose knowledge is too cold. Then they go to the Hall of Records, which is made of sticks. Then they get sent to the storage asteroid, which is made of bricks and just right. Or, I don't know, this was more clever in my head. Oh, and the guy in the Hall of Records knocks over a big stack of paper books. It's bad enough Earth hasn't gone paperless yet, but you're telling me Cybertron still uses books as well? That's just sad. So the pair of them steal a garbage truck, which Cyclonus just happens to be monitoring. Man, are the Decepticons' priorities just really out of whack this week, or is it just me? Cyclonus, Scourge, Sweeps, follow it! This may provide the opportunity we need! Yeah, alright. So naturally, the kids in their stolen ship crash the ship. Which is always what happens on TV when a kid steals something. I guess the lesson is, stealing is wrong. Or maybe just that kids are terrible drivers. They walk out of the ship onto an asteroid, which apparently has an atmosphere. Or Daniel is a mutant like his father and can just breathe in open space. Probably that one. It doesn't matter. Meanwhile, Spike notices Daniel missing, but he's too caught up in his own work to worry about it too much. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. Back on the asteroid, Daniel and Wheelie are chased by, um, little flying space eels or something. Then they duck into a cave and discover that, entirely by accident, they've discovered the lost Autobot storage asteroid. What are the odds? Wheelie's scared to go in, so he makes the human go first. Man, that's some good babysitting there. Daniel starts up the computer, which is an idiot because it sends out robots to shoot them both. Now, okay, not everyone is self-aware like an Autobot, but you'd think they'd program their security system to recognize one of their own. But then the story sort of implies that this thing was built during the reign of you-know-who, so there's probably no real logic to it all. So they run away, only to find that the space eels are still out there. Those are destroyed by the robots, which are then destroyed by... Cyclonus. Yeah, I don't know either. Cyclonus? Huh? Come on, Wheelie! Wheelie, I think we'd better get out of here! Are they trying to go for poorly dubbed Japanese movie here? Because that's what it sounds like to me. Fortunately, this next exchange kind of makes up for it. Uh, an ice cream factory? You are insolent, Earth Boy. <laughs> Meanwhile, the valiant, selfless Ultra Magnus is off looking for the boys, since Spike is too busy to do it. Little boy, Blue Streak, and the man in the moon base. So Cyclonus and the sweeps activate the thrusters, <laughs> thrusters, and send the asteroid on a collision course for Cybertron. And here's their good great plan. We won't harm the boy if you don't stop us smashing this asteroid, which has the boy on it, into your planet. Uh... Ultra Magnus and Skylinks go save the day. Naturally, they succeed. And then comes the horrible punchline of the episode. My birthday? I don't even know when that is. Say, I got an idea, guys. What's that? Why don't we just designate today as Ultra Magnus' birthday? We'll have a party tonight. <laughs> All right! What we really want to know, why we not think this up long ago? Happy birthday, Ultra Magnus! <laughs> 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 